Dear Mom, I'm writing you from a hospital bed. Don't worry, Mom, I'm okay. I was wounded, but the doctor says I'll be up in no time. But that's not what I had to tell you, Mom. Something happened to me that I don't dare tell anyone else for fear of their disbelief. But I have to tell you, the one person I can confide in, though even you may find it hard to believe. You remember the prayer to St. Michael that you taught me to pray when I was little? Michael, Michael of the morning? Before I left home for Korea, you urged me to remember this prayer before any confrontation with the enemy. But you really didn't have to remind me, Mom. I've always prayed it. And when I got to Korea, I sometimes said it a couple times a day while marching or resting. Well, one day, we were told to move forward to scout for commies. It was a really cold day. As I was walking along, I perceived another fellow walking beside me, and I looked to see who it was. He was a big fellow, a marine about 6'4", and built proportionally. Funny, but I didn't know him, and I thought I knew everyone in my unit. I was glad to have the company and broke the silence between us. Chilly today, isn't it? <laughs> then I chuckled, because suddenly it seemed absurd to talk about the weather when we were advancing to meet the enemy. He chuckled too, softly. <laughs> I thought I knew everyone in my outfit, but I've never seen you before, I continued. No, I've just joined. The name is Michael. Really? That's mine too. I know. Michael. Michael of the morning. Mom, I was really surprised that he knew about my prayer. But I had taught it to many of the other guys, so I suppose that the newcomer must have picked it up from somewhere else. It had gotten around to the extent that some of the fellows were calling me St. Michael. Then... Out of the blue, Michael said, There's going to be trouble ahead. I wondered how he could know that. I was breathing hard from the march, and my breath hit the cold air like dense clouds of fog. Michael seemed to be in top shape because I couldn't see his breath at all. Just then, it started to snow heavily, and soon it was so dense, I could no longer hear or see the rest of my unit. I got a little scared and yelled, Michael! Then I felt his strong hand in my shoulder and heard his voice in my ear. It's going to clear up soon. It did clear up, suddenly. And then, just a short distance ahead of us, like so many dreadful realities, were seven commies, looking rather comical in their funny hats. But there was nothing funny about them now. Their guns were steadily pointed straight in our direction. Down, Michael! I yelled as I dove for cover. I look up and saw Michael still standing as if paralyzed with fear, so I thought at the time. Bullets were spurting all over the place, and Mom, there was just no way those commies could have missed at that short distance. I jumped up to pull them down, and then I was hit. Someone was laying me down. Strong arms were holding me and laying me gently on the snow. I opened my eyes, and the sun blazed in them. Michael was standing still and there was a terrible splendor in his face. Suddenly, he seemed to grow, like the sun, the splendor increasing intensely around him like the wings of an angel. As I slipped into unconsciousness, I saw that Michael held a sword in his hand, and it flashed like a million lights. Later on, when I woke up, the rest of the guys came to see me with the sergeant. How'd you do it, son? He asked me. W where's Michael? Michael who? Michael, the, the big Marine walking with me. Right up to the last moment. I saw him there as I fell. Son, you're the only Michael in my unit. I handpicked all you fellas, and there's only one Michael. You. And son, you weren't walking with anyone. I was watching you because you were far off from us and I was worried. Now tell me, son, how did you do it? It was the second time he had asked me that and I found it irritating. How did I do what? How did you kill those seven commies? There wasn't a single bullet fired from your rifle. What? Come on, son. They were strewn all around you, each one killed by a sword stroke. And that, Mom, is the end of my story. It may have been the pain, or the blazing sun, or the chilling cold. I don't know, Mom. There's one thing I'm sure about. It happened. Love your son, Michael.